Well, hello, this is Pastor Russ, and now it's time for us to do our mini Bible study on that we always do on Mondays. Uh, we are right now uh, in the midst of doing Genesis chapter 19. And uh, if you remember in Genesis chapter 18, Abram, now called Abraham, is uh, has, was visited by three uh, people. We think those were at least one of them was the Lord and uh, could be that uh, the other two were angels. And he had bargained with them at the end of chapter 18 about whether or not they should have uh, destroyed the city of Sodom and Gomorrah because of their sin. And Abraham has negotiated with them and they agreed not to destroy the city of, of Sodom if they found at least 10 people there. Ten people that were holy, that were righteous, that were followers of God. And so now let's continue as we look now at uh, chapter 19 of, of the book of Genesis. And I'll be reading uh, from the New International Version. We've got a lot to cover, so I'm going to start right in and then we'll uh, stop and discuss. The two angels arrived at Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gateway of the city. When he saw them, he got up to meet them, and he bowed down with his face to the ground. My lords, he said, please turn aside to your servant's house. You can wash your feet and spend the night, and then go on your way early in the morning. No, they answered, we will spend the night in the square. But he insisted so strongly that they did go with him, and they entered his house. He prepared a meal for them baking bread without yeast, and they ate. Before they had gone to bed, all the men from every part of the city of Sodom, both young and old, surrounded the house. They called to Lot, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us so that we can have sex with them. Lot went outside to meet them and shut the door behind him and said, No, my friends, don't do this wicked thing. I have two daughters who have never slept with a man. Let me bring them out to you. And you can do what you like with them, but don't do anything to these men, for they have come under the protection of my roof. Get out of our way, they replied. And they said, this fellow came here as an alien, and now he wants to play the judge. We'll treat you worse than them. They kept bringing pressure on Lot and moved forward to break down the door. But the men inside reached out and pulled Lot back into the house and shut the door. Then they struck the men who were at the door of the house, young and old, with blindness, so they could not find the door. The two men said to Lot, Do you have anyone else here, sons-in-law, sons or daughters, or anyone else in the city who belongs to you? Get them out of here, because we are going to destroy this place. The outcry of the Lord against his people is so great, he has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law, who were pledged to marry his daughters. He said, Hurry and get out of this place, because the Lord is about to destroy the city. But his sons-in-law thought he was joking. With the coming of the dawn, the angels urged Lot, saying, Hurry, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, or you will be swept away when the city is punished. When he hesitated, the men grasped his hand and the hands of his wife and of his two daughters, and led them safely out of the city, for the Lord was merciful to them. As soon as they had brought them out, one of them said, Flee for your lives. Don't look back, and don't stop anywhere in the plain. Flee to the mountains, or you will be swept away. But Lot said to them, No, my lords, please. Your servant has found favor in your eyes, and you have shown great kindness to me in sparing my life. But I can't flee to the mountains. This disaster will overtake me, and I will die. Look, there is a town near enough to run to, and it is small. Let me flee to it. It's very small, isn't it? Then my life will be spared. He said to him, Very well. I will grant this request, too. I will not overthrow the town that you speak of, but flee there quickly, because I cannot do anything until you reach it. That's why the town was called Zoar. By the time Lot reached Zoar, the sun had risen over the land. Then the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. 
Thus he overthrew those cities and the entire plain, including all those living in the cities and also the vegetation in the land. But Lot's wife looked back, and she became a pillar of salt. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and returned to the place where he had stood before the Lord. He looked down toward Sodom and Gomorrah, toward all the land of the plain, and he saw dense smoke rising from the land, like smoke from a furnace. So when God destroyed the cities of the plain, he remembered Abraham, and he brought Lot out of the catastrophe that overthrew the cities where Lot had lived. Lot and his two daughters left Zoar and settled in the mountains, for he was afraid to stay in Zoar. He and his two daughters lived in a cave. One day the older daughter said to the younger, Our father is old and there is no man around here to lie with us, as is the custom all over the earth. Let us get our father to drink wine and then lie with him, and preserve our family line through our father. That night they got their father to drink wine, and the older daughter went in, and lay with him. He was not aware of it when she lay down or when she got up. The next day, the older daughter said to the younger, last night I lay with my father. Let's get him to drink wine again tonight, and you go in and lie with him so that we can preserve our family line through our father. So they got their father to drink wine that night also, and the younger daughter went in and lay with him. Again, he was not aware of it when she lay down or when she got up. So both of Lot's daughters became pregnant by their father. The older daughter had a son, and she named him Moab. He is the father of the Moabites today. And the younger daughter also had a son, and she named him Ben-Ami. He is the father of the Ammonites today. And so ends the, the reading of Scripture today. And you know, there's so much in there that we need to talk about and discuss. This really is a story about um, Abraham, or not Abraham, but Lot, making what I call bad choices and bad decisions and compromised positions. And that's really the story for us today, is what are the choices that we make in our life? And do we compromise our positions? For example, uh, at the very beginning of the uh, scripture for today, in chapter 19, we see that Lot is sitting at the gate. That means he's a respected civic leader. That's usually where the judges uh, sat to make judgments for the people. And so here is Lot sitting there, and he knows the wickedness of all the people in the town. And that's why he wants to take these two strangers, and he wants to take them right away into his house. He wants them to leave early in the morning so that they don't get accosted by the men of the city. But of course, we find out in the story, it's too late and, and they do get accosted. And they tell uh, Lot to take his all of his relatives and get them out of the city. And surprisingly, it's just Lot and his wife, his two daughters and their uh, sons-in-law. And so they're, they're husbands to be. And there's a total of six of them. Interesting it is that in chapter 18, Abraham negotiated with God all the way down to 10. If you find 10 people, uh, then God would not destroy the city. But he couldn't even find 10. There were only six. And he, he allowed them to escape. And so they left. And uh, we have the story of Lot's wife looking back. Uh, and, of course, this is disobedience to God's direct order. Do not look back. You know, sometimes in our hearts, we want to do things, and it's hard for us to be obedient to God. And uh, here it shows that she would rather choose, you know, life with, uh, you know, a, a disobedience rather than life with, you know, obedience to God. And so she felt the wrath, the judgment of God. And so instead she, you know, was uh, destroyed, turned into a pillar of salt. One of the things I, I read about this was Lot really didn't make good choices his entire life. And in fact, he lived his, his whole life uh, that really was, uh, you know, a, an example of someone that was not happy enough with God uh, to be happy in the world and not happy enough with the world that he could go with God. And so uh, it just really was a sad case with Lot. And that was the story of his life. In fact, at the end, the children that his two daughters uh, had from him, the, the Moabites and the Ammonites, would be enemies of the descendants of Abraham. Just as Lot and, and Abraham, you know, split because they couldn't get along, uh, Lot made a, a bad choice, 
Uh, he compromised. He was even going to give his own daughters, virgin daughters, uh, you know, to the men of the city of, of, of Sodom instead of taking advantage of the two men that he had there with him. And it's just a sad, sad case. So uh, we'll continue on next week with uh, Genesis chapter 20. And I hope you have a blessed week. Uh, good to see you and uh, have a great day.